Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, episode three of the KLE build, we're going to be assembling the front and rear suspension onto the onto the frame. First thing we're going to do is assemble the linkage into the frame. It's a lot easier to do this with it all upside down, so that's where I'm going to start. So. This is the this is the linkage that we rebuilt in the previous video. So first thing I'm going to do is get this installed into the bike. So this is the bolt that goes all the way through the bottom of the frame here, um, and the linkage sits in here. I'm just going to apply a little bit of standard grease to the bolt. I checked the torque settings in the service manual. And this bolt should be tightened to 72 foot pounds. Very satisfying sound. And we'll just check that this still moves nice and freely, which it does. So the next thing we're gonna install is the swing arm itself. Uh, the reason that has to go in next is the shock actually threads up through the swing arm. Uh, so obviously what, if the shock is in we can't assemble the swing arm into the frame. So get the swing arm in. And this is the swing arm bolt. I'm just going to put a little bit of grease on it. It's not to provide lubrication, it's just to stop it corroding. What we're going to do, make sure we've got, the, got it the right way around. A little bit of a juggling act. So swing arm pivot is tightened to 85 foot pounds. So just adjust my torque wrench. There we go, that's the swing arm tightened. So now we're gonna put the shock in. I'm gonna thread the shock in from the bottom. Just move that linkage out of the way. And it'll only fit one way up. I'm gonna fit it with the adjuster pointing to the back of the bike. We've got our shock bolt here. Again, a little bit of grease on the bolt. I'll just pop the nut on here. I'm not going to tighten the top shock bolt until there's a little bit of weight on it. Um, it's got a rubber mount in the top of the shock. Uh, and you shouldn't tighten, the tighten them up until the weight is on them. These other shock linkage bolts are all tightened to 65 foot pounds. It's just a case of finding sockets that fit. So now we've got the linkage, the shock and the swing arm fitted to the frame. The last thing we need to do is fit the linkages between the swing arm and the actual suspension linkage on the frame. So we've just got this bottom part assembled loosely and then what we'll do is get this bolt in here as well. Which will hold it all together. As you can see, that's the rear shock linkage all assembled, 
all the bolts torqued and everything done up as it should be okay so while the bike's this way up I'm also going to put the rear wheel in and I'm also going to put the side stand on um, and then we'll flip the bike over and assemble the front end so I've got a nice freshly powder coated side stand here the original spring and the bolt for it I do need to find the nut I'm not sure where it is at the moment it's in a big box of bolts that I have around somewhere of the problem of buying a project from someone else that they've half started is sometimes you don't know where everything is so I just popped a little bit of grease on there and then what we're going to do try and do it from this side Just hook the spring on, just push the bolt through. And we'll just tighten that pivot bolt up. Again, it's just a job that's easier to do while the frame's upside down. There we are. That's the side to stand on. That's the next thing I'm going to do is find all of the adjustable components for this rear swing arm and for the rear axle. So I'm just going to assemble the rear axle adjuster mechanisms into the back of the swing arm here. Um, apply a little bit of lubrication in here. Again, it's less, less for lubrication than it is for to stop any corrosion forming. Um, makes everything go together a lot easier and adjustments much easier in the future if everything's lubricated rather than being dry which then goes rusty so each adjuster is made up of a, a block that sits inside the axle tube so it sits in here a plate which fits on the end and then there's an indicator plate or a spreader plate that just sits on the outside of the swing arm so and assemble the adjusters. Well, I've got some nice stainless steel hardware here. Again, it's just to uh, make maintenance easier in the future. Stops things going rusty. You could just reuse the stock stuff. And I'm opting to use uh, two plain nuts rather than a nylock nut the adjuster. So I'm just going to set these about halfway along, about halfway along the thread and then they just fit. And they're like that. Just do the same with the other one. Axle adjuster and the, and the plate. Stainless washer. I've already put a little bit of oil on these threads and I'm just going to set them both the same so our rear axle starts off in a parallel position I'm going to do that just by comparing the length of thread that I've wound through the nut it's not precise and we'll deal with the wheel alignment again at another point but it will get us to a good starting point Again, slides in there. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to actually going to pop the rear wheel in at this point as well. Okay, so I haven't actually cleaned the rear wheel up and I haven't really done too much with the rear spindle either. I just want to get it, get it in here so that we can flip the bike over. And I'll take it apart again at a later date. So we've got adjust the plate wheel spindle through there this is the rear brake caliper carrier and this part interlocks with this bit on the swing arm 
and then pull that spindle back through there a little bit. And finally, the other plate, washer, and the nut. There we go, it's only temporary, it's not in there properly, it's still going to move around in the swing arm, because I don't have the sprocket carrier and sprocket on this side yet. It'll give us something to put the bike on when I turn it over. So I'm going to do that now and then we'll have a look at putting the front end together. Okay, so I've got the bike the right way up. Next thing we're gonna do is assemble the steering stem into the frame. So I've already put new bearings on it. So I'm just gonna pack those with, with grease. Now you can get tools to pack tapered roller bearings with, with grease, but you can just Kind of force it in there with your fingers if you don't mind getting grease all over your hands. And then I'm just going to pop a little bit of grease in where the seals run in the frame. Then what we do, do is just steering stem up from the bottom. Bearing in there. Grease seal. And then we have stem stem nut. Now I don't have a special tool to do this up, so I'm going to be a terrible person and use a pair of vice grips. The manual calls for it to be over tightened, and then for it to then to move it, then to slacken it, and then finally reseat it by just doing it up by hand. Okay, so we've got our lower yoke in, the steering stem which is attached to it. We've got new bearings which are freshly greased, upper seal, the nut on the top which is done up hand tight, and then there's this little locking tab washer which goes on top of here and locates in the notches and then our top yoke goes on then it has a washer which I've left somewhere so it has a washer and then the nut goes on there We're not going to tighten this until the forks are in because the forks will then align these and then this nut will actually lock it all together and that little tab washer will stop the adjustment nut underneath coming undone. So I've got the frame up on a couple of jack stands and the rear wheel chock so it can't fall off. And now what we're going to do is we're just going to thread the shocks in from the bottom, making sure we've got them the right way around. Take our Allen key. And normally forks go into the yokes with the top of the stanchion level, level with the top of the top yoke. So I'm just going to do the clamp bolts up. I'm going to do the bottom ones up fairly tight, although not to the final final torque. The top ones, I'm just going to nip one of them up because we're going to need to undo them again to tighten up the top stem nut. Grab the other fork and do the same again. Just check that one was lined up at the top, which it is. So we'll just do these up. I'm only going to do the bottom two up because the top ones we're going to need to undo again. Okay, so there we go. That's our front forks on. Right, so I'm just going to grab the front wheel and we'll stick the front wheel in here. Again, it's still pretty dirty. Um, well, it's still very dirty. This hasn't peeled, pulled it out of the shed, so yeah, it's it's a temporary fit just to say that the, the bike will roll around again. 
So let's see if we can get this to go in here. I think we've got a spacer in one of our boxes. I'm sure I've seen it. I think this is I think this belongs to the front wheel. Yeah it does. I'm gonna so this has been powder coated but it hasn't been masked off and it's been powder coated so I'm just gonna have to go and clean this up so I'll be right back. Okay so that's cleaned that up. If you're uh, gonna get parts powder coated as for, for your project uh, make sure that you mask off any any surfaces that need to be a push fit or a close tolerance fit to anything else otherwise you have to do a lot of cleaning up surfaces when you get everything back. <laughs> that's better. Let's see if we can get this on here. There we go, a little bit, little bit of a fiddle. But it's always a lot easier if you've got a couple of people who can help you. So that's it, we've got front and rear wheels now. So I'm going to take it off its jack stands and put it on its side stand. And then we'll have a look at just putting the handlebars on so I can push it around. Okay, so we're now down on the wheels, so I'm just going to put the handlebars on. But before I do that, I'm just going to tighten up the steering stem nut. To do that, I'm just going to slacken off these uh, yoke bolts so that the top yoke can actually move. And then we'll actually tighten all of these bolts up. properly and then put the handlebars on so the book calls for 27 foot pounds on that particular fastener which I happen to know that is nearly as tight as I can do up with that ratchet bar so I didn't bother to use a torque wrench there. Um, I always recommend that you do if you're unsure. Uh, over torquing a bolt is just as bad as under torquing it. So if you're not sure, use a torque wrench on every fastener. It takes a little bit longer, but it's also the safest route. There we go, that's all there. All the front suspension fasteners done up now, so I'm just going to pop the handlebars in. So yeah, the clamps have got a little arrow on them to show you which way is up. So not every, not all of them have, but most, most of them do. Now I've just centralised the bars in in the clamps by eye. Uh, it's a little bit again. It's another thing that's a little bit temporary, so that I can actually move this bike around without struggling too much but there we go it's one assembled frame and suspension so that's it guys thanks very much for watching episode three of the KLE build we've got all the suspension on this bike now so it's a rolling chassis so I can push it around nice and easily it's been absolutely fantastic having you here keeping me company in the workshop if you like what you see, don't forget to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I'll be back again really soon. Um, and in the meantime, get out on those bikes and enjoy them. And I'll be back again really soon with more motor vlog content.